meeting that we've had where the daylight savings time is in effect, which is nice because it is now light when we get here. Also, later in the year when you're coming here this time, it will be a little bit warmer because the air conditioner turns off now. Hi, Chosky. Hi. Yes. I wasn't raising my hand. I was trying something. Don't worry oh, about okay. me. <laughs> you're just gesturing at me with things in the back. So, uh, news is news. We, uh, I do have a topic for my meeting, but I don't want to give spoilers on that, so we'll have to do something different here. Uh, why don't you talk about that uh, bootable flash drive? I don't have that with me, but I will we get could to that talk eventually. About it. Uh, I've been trying to get my own many things done. Uh, but I mean, but you could talk about the process and the concepts and things. I probably could. I don't have. Well, I don't have a thumb drive. Well, let me let's oh, let me go oh, over news. Right. We have news and things going on. All right. So all those right. of you that follow us on Meetup probably know that Meetup was had a denial of service attack a couple of days, weeks ago, last week or so. For several days, uh, I think that we had trouble sending out the emails because. Uh, well, actually, all we knew at the time was that our API limit, which is the number of requests that we can send to get information about where the meetups are, so we can send out to the mailing list, which is the traditional method that people find out about meetings. Um, all we were saying was we were over our API limit. And I, I yelled at Brian, like, Brian, your script has been querying the server too much. Oh, I didn't bother putting in the API limit. Querying, this querying the server has been running twice a day. Yeah, and I tried figuring out, because I think the limit's in the hundreds, Possibly higher, possibly higher than that. So I was like, "How could you possibly have been doing that?" And then it would just. I mean, out. I could do something to hit over a hundred in like ten minutes, but I don't think. It, I think it's even more than that. I think it's I, whatever it is. The limit was high enough where it didn't seem to be much of a concern. So, for those of you that are interested in that, there was a denial of service attack using everyone's favorite NTP. Um, NTP reflection attack, which can send like four hundred gigabytes a second at any random server. And that wasn't very fun. Um, tonight's topic will actually be about installing SSH guard because I had an all my own little denial of service attack the other day where someone with a very fat pipe tried connecting to my machine roughly 10 times a second. And this created so many SSH processes that it, uh, well, it just wasn't pretty. I had to go and start killing things. It only took 10 times a second? What? It only took 10 times a second? Yes. It took 10 times a second also because libc had been updated and every SSH process wasn't exiting clearly because its copy of libc um, was gone. So, but still, 10 times a second is way bad. Not allowed to happen. Now, uh, I can, what I'll do is I'll get us blacklisted from this IP on my server, and which should be fine because it will only last until the next slug meeting um, here because I think I set it to 25 days if you fail to log in twice. So that's what our topic will be. But moving along to news, um, normally, Sam would be here to talk about news in the PHP community in the area, but he's not, so I don't know what's going on there. So the next round of topic would be makerspaces. Do we, Brian, do we have any updates or interesting things going on at the Tampa Hackerspace? The Tampa Hackerspace is the Tampa Hackerspace, and they're Are doing they doing anything stuff. cool recently? Yes, but I haven't been paying attention to the list, and they moved to Meetup, which I'm not using. So you really should I'm use Meetup. horrible at answering that question. You really should use Meetup. I'll, I'll see if I can point our thing to kind of aggregate some of that information. They did print up a set of business cards. So if there's anyone interested in getting a business card for Tampa Hackerspace, um, let me know. And I've got a bunch. I'd like one. <laughs> Meanwhile, you. I live in Pinellas. And over in Pinellas, we have the Pinellas Hack Shack, which has been doing swimmingly. We had a spot. Uh, this, is, this was actually, we had a meeting since then, but we had a spot yeah, at the B-Sides uh, Tampa <laughs> Security Conference, which was interesting, but we weren't alone because there was also FamilyLab from Orlando and the Tampa, Tampa Hackerspace, so it was like three makerspaces at a security conference. I don't know what's up with that. Mm -hmm. But uh, on display, we had our kayak, which we we're moving closer to our kayak building mm -hmm. classes. Uh, I should have fixed dates for that at some point soon. The space itself, we've built up our desks. We've been building organizational structures for all the tools that we have, uh, which primarily is still woodworking, although we have some plans on a CNC machine, that kind of do-it-yourself thing. And, uh, oh, we have a kiln, operational kiln now. It's kind of small electric, but uh, that's oh, well. Wow. Uh, I believe we have a sewing machine that the found, uh, founder of the Pinellas Hack Shack, Art Eaton, has used to make sales, so it's kind of... Heavy duty. Kind of heavy yeah, duty. Industrial strike. Yeah, it's the one I'm thinking about, right? The big sewing machine that was there? I, or maybe you didn't notice it? There. Someone else pointed it out when I was there, so. 
Uh, so we've been there every month. Uh, we've been there every Sunday and Tuesday. Uh, we're starting to have a drop off in people attending every. Uh, sorry, not Monday and Tuesday. Sunday and Tuesday. We're starting to have a drop off. We may reconfigure, um, just do it once a week, our open day. Um, although if you really want to get there, you can talk to myself, or Sam, or Art, and all of us have well, obviously Art because it's his building. But we'll have 24-hour access there, so we can. If you want to go there on a special tour or come in and do something, you're on Pinellas side. That's perfectly fine. Uh, I also live next to there, and I work from home, so really, it's I'll post on the on the mailing list or on Slack. Hey, Dylan, I would like to see the Hack Shack. When can you be there? And I'll be like, Well, it'll take me about twelve minutes to bike there if I'm going really slow. All right, so I don't know. Well, if you know, Hack Shack does have a very large selection of woodworking tools. A so huge a selection. Of of we are also gaining woodworking tools. What? Of quality woodwork. We are also probably possibly gaining <laughs> access to a wood lathe, which is incredible. Um, that, and that's it for that's it for the tools and health hack shack. Oh, and we have meanwhile, a project. I live in St. Petersburg, and there's a group in downtown St. Petersburg. Uh, let's to wait till they have a facility. Let's say that if you're interested, to in set up a maker space in St. Petersburg. Okay. And if you're interested in one of the organ helping with the organizational meetings for that, let me know. Yep. I recommend they find a building and start building things, because that works really well for us. We are five miles north of St. Pete, so it's sort of, it's amusing. Although, we actually serve as an interesting scapegoat for the people. I don't know if you need, all, if you all are Tampa guys, or if most of you are Tampa guys, I don't think you should know about Pinellas County. If you live in Clearwater, you never want to leave Clearwater. And if you live in St. Pete, you never want to leave St. Pete. But if you live in Pinellas Park, which is wedged in between them, you always want to leave Pinellas Park for some reason. I think it's the horses. <laughs> Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, local political I political issues aside, uh, I'm going to have to have some time to per make sure I actually have something to talk about. So what we will do to give me time is we will break and people can introduce themselves. I'll start. Hey, Art, you need someone to let you in? Are you okay? Do you need anything? Oh, okay. 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 I was I was prepared to I was prepared to jump into action and figure out what we could do to help, but uh, it looks like you got it under control. So you'll skip tonight. So you, uh, Sam is not here. I haven't seen him. Do you need some? If you do, you need someone. To, do you need anything? You sure you don't need anything? Okay. Keep the phone around. Yeah, I got a phone. No problem. Bye. That was the aforementioned Mr. Eaton, who has had a coil go out and probably won't be here this evening. Uh, he's okay though. He's someone on the in part. He has his entire tool kit in his car. He's very crafty. So where were we? We were covered the oh, same peak. Hackers. We were going to cover something that you're going to talk about. Like you were going to. Oh, we're going to introduce each other. Yeah, and I'll go And first. then you're going to put something oh. together. Yeah. While you're introducing each other, we we'll kind of have an open free for all, and I will talk to you about locking down your system so that the script kiddies stop harassing you. All right. Um. Okay. I'm pretty sure so it's I'll China that's harassing me. Yeah, I get China, but I also get rural Indiana, and I don't even know how to have internet connections there. But that's I, I think it's probably botnets, but... Um, so I'll go first. I kind of already introduced myself, but my name is Dylan Hardison. I work for Mozilla. I work on the Mozilla product, which is when thing, something goes wrong, the place you go to tell them that it's wrong. Although it's very... Mostly want you to find out if someone else has already told you that something's wrong. But you can actually create new bugs if you're persistent. Uh, that's a, that's <laughs> a project written in Perl, and I basically am the resident Perl guy around here. I've been doing Perl for a long time, but I'm also sort of a polyglot. So while I paid to do Perl, I also like the slug websites written in Scala, and I'm writing a router configuration interface in Node.js right now, or the back end for a router configuration system 
and Node.js, and that's kind of me. So, anyone else? Uh, introducing yourself is optional, but we'll go in this order, and you can just go skip. Start. 